one is forced to face some harsh truths this hour, but it's a necessary growing pain in order to move forward. People are dropping like flies and if Teju wants to stay alive, he'll have to keep on his toes because if one thing's for sure, he's running out of time. Episode 10 Recap After a quick recap of the entire Kim Min SEOK mystery from Tejoo's first encounter in 2018 up until Tejoo's present, we see our favorite detective leaving work for the night. As he steps into the hallway, however, the lights begin to flicker and an eerie voice calls out to him. The voice, identifying itself as Kim Min SEOK, leads Teju to a window that lights up like a screen to show 2018 Kim Min SEOK, dressed as a doctor. As he leans over Tejoo's hospital bed, he remarks that the detective looks surprisingly well. Min SEOK says he brought a gift and produces a tape recorder. When he presses play, ex fiance Seo Hyun's voice screams for Teju to save her. Teju runs towards the window, but the hallway warps and stretches, keeping him in the same spot. Smirking, Min SEOK says there's nothing Teju can do, no matter what, he can't come back. He walks away and the window reverts to normal glass. The lights flicker again and Teju begins to choke, gasping for air. The hallway goes dark and suddenly, Teju is lying on the floor of his room still struggling to breathe. The television beside him shows his 2018 doctor and nurse rushing into his hospital room. Doc says Teju is having a seizure and as he applies the defibrillator, Tejoo's body spasms. Between jolts, Teju flashes back to the roof, when he was about to jump, thinking it would return him to 2018. He remembers Na Young had held his hand over her heart and said that whether he's dreaming or traveled back in time, there's a reason he's here. As he holds her hand in the vision, Tejoo's body finally relaxes. That morning at work, Teju calls around two elementary schools looking for young Kim in SEOK. After crossing paths with him the night before, when young Min SEOK had rescued young Teju from bullies, Teju had attempted to ask his younger self about the other boy. Unfortunately, all little Teju could do was confirm the other boy's name. Suddenly, Tejoo's ear begins to ring and blood trickles out. A bright light flashes and the TV clicks on to show Tejoo's doctor giving an interview. Doc starts by saying Tejoo's case is extremely rare. Tejoo's body has suffered severe damage and his prolonged coma is only making things worse. He continues that even if Teju were to regain consciousness, his body wouldn't be able to function properly. Essentially, Teju has no hope for recovery. Oh dear. Doc's voice overlaps itself, reiterating that Teju is doomed and it would be better to pull the plug. With an anguished cry, Teju throws a hand radio at the TV and then nearly jumps out of his skin when a voice asks if he can hear the voices from such a distance. A young man stands beside Teju and warns him not to believe the voices, they lie. Blinking back, Teju tentatively asks if the stranger heard everything. Nodding emphatically, the young man confirms he hears the voices all the time. He then reveals that he's from 2018 and a stunned Teju starts to say the same when the man holds up his hand. He warns Teju that others might be listening, and then taps his ear, wondering if Teju also has a wiretap. The man continues that he has a wiretap in his ear and Teju realizes that the stranger is not a fellow time traveler, he's just crazy. The rest of the team arrives and apparently the man is no stranger to the station. Turns out, he always shows up around the same time every year, escaping from the psychiatric hospital and causing a ruckus at the station. The detectives are forced to chase him around the room, and eventually manage to tie him up. He refuses to leave before performing the E.T. finger touch with both Dong Chal and Teju. He, as he's being escorted out, the mystery patient greets a young officer, seeming to recognize him. The officer quietly watches the man get dragged away before reporting to the team that a crime scene has been discovered. Driving out to the countryside, Dong Chul comments that Teju looks tired. Teju says he didn't sleep much which Dong Chul takes to mean he made use of the dirty magazine Dong Chul had left him. Irritated, Teju tells him to speed up, and Dong Chul leans out to yell at the tractor in front of them. The schoolchildren catching a ride on the back of the tractor jeer at the detectives and Dong Chul good-naturedly teases them back. All's well until one boy makes a rude gesture, one that Dong Chul is fond of using himself, and after a shocked beat, Dong Chul starts screaming at the kid to learn some manners. Hee <laughs> hee. The pair finally arrives at the crime scene to find that they're short-staffed, due to the Olympics. 
Na Young leads them over to a deep hole in the ground where a woman's body had been discarded. She explains that a farmer found the corpse while working and Taeju notes that the body appears to have been dead for about a month. Unfortunately, there's nothing more they can do until the forensic team arrives. Sometime later, the forensic team turns up along with a crew of officers and the other two detectives in Dong Chul's unit. The officers scour the fields for the victim's belongings. Na Young finds a shoe, maknae detective Nam shake a purse, and so on until they've located everything they could. The victim's ID says her name is Kim Bok Rai and she lives in the village. Taeju assumes she was murdered on her way home from the bus stop. He, Na Young, and Dong Chul head over to Bok Rai's house and find it oddly void of any photographs but her own. In the bathtub, they find the charred remains of the missing photos. Dumb luck leads them to the only surviving family photo when Dong Chul trips and spots it under a dresser. Tae Jmo's stomach drops when he looks at the picture and recognizes little Kim in SEOK staring up at him from between a man and Bok Rai.